lesson is over slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. Make sure that you always fill out your topic so that you know what it is that you're learning. Also make sure to fill in your name and at least your class period so in case you ever um, lose these they can be found again. There will be an essential question for every unit. This unit we are going to ask how are slopes related um, for parallel and perpendicular lines. So I'm sure that you guys can remember some slope from Algebra 1. Um, we are not going to use slope exactly the same way that you guys learned in Algebra 1. It um, is specifically pertaining to parallel and perpendicular lines. It's what, that is what makes it geometry. Um, but we still need to remember how to find slope in order to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is do slope, and it's going to be from a graph. Little graph. Um, you are also welcome to take a piece of graph paper and paste it in right there. Um, find another little graph that you could put right there. You do not have to just graph this straight up onto some Cornell notes. So you can, of course, get um, the graph paper or whatever you need. Also remember that if you guys need me to slow down, you have the capability of pausing videos points are um, but I want to give you all some steps that you'll use for using slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines so the first thing you're going to do is find two perfect points see my perfect points but if you um, were given a graph that you needed to find the slope of you need to find those two perfect points and all that means is a point where that line crosses um, some grid lines. So, of course, if I was giving you this, there would be grid lines here, and you could see where the two perfect points are. Um, in this problem, it will be one negative one, and then this one will be two one. Um, you can also, of course, color code these if that will make you uh, um, will help you. Step two would be to find your rise, because remember slope is a rise over run. So that means we're going to count from the lower point up to the higher point, and we're just going to go straight up, not diagonally. So it goes up, one, two. So I rose two. And then we need to find your run. So from this point we would go to the right one. So we went that way one. Our run is one. At this point is where you need to plug it into your formula. So it's normally rise over run which means that it will be two over one and we need to simplify that and two divided by one will always be just the whole number two. So the graph of that line has a slope of 2. We also need to make sure that you guys remember um, what are positive, negative, 0, and no slope lines. So in this case, we're going to draw four different graphs. And these are just sketches. They do not have to, by any means, be perfect or anything like that. Just one is a line that looks like this. And this is a positive slope. If you ever cannot remember, and this is going to be kind of silly, but if you ever can't remember, you can draw a person. And we always put its feet to the right so that you can see which direction it's walking. So it's walking from left to right. It is walking uphill, which is what makes that little person positive. Next, I'm going to draw a line like this. And this is a negative slope. So if I were to draw my picture of this one and my shoes to the right, he would be walking downhill. And 
Next is a line like this, just straight horizontal line, and that is a zero slope. And since I can draw a person walking on that, because a lot of people get zero and no slope confused, um, as long as somebody can walk on it, there is a slope. It may be a zero slope, but there is a slope. So in this case, it's a zero slope and it's a flat line or flat surface. Lastly is a line that just goes straight up and down. And this is um, no slope. So if I were to try to draw a guy walking on this, he would fall to his bloody, bloody death. So instead, we're going to put a parachute on him. Remember, these are stick figures, so stick figure parachute. There you go. So he won't fall. And, of course, no slope is if you would fall down. Sorry. Next, we're going to do slope from two points. So if you are not given a graph, how do you find the slope? So if I'm given two points, let's say um, negative three, five, and two negative six. If I want to find the slope of a line that passes through those two points, the very first thing you would do is label your x's and y's. So if y'all remember from Algebra 1, the formula um, has two x's and two y's in it. So this is going to be my x2 and my y2. And this will be my x1 and my y1. And the next thing you do is plug it into the equation. The equation is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and I will always give you guys um, a formula chart so don't think that you guys have to memorize the formulas you will have to memorize the process for solving these things but you never have to memorize formulas I will always give those to you my y2 is 5 minus my y1 is negative 6 my x2 is negative 3 and then my x1 is 2. Now we need to simplify. Remember whenever you subtract a negative number, it's the same thing as adding. So 5 plus 6 is 11. And negative 3 minus 2, you owe me $3. And then you owe me another 2. So now you owe me $5, which is negative 11 fifths as our slope. And we are done with that. Age, rent. I have now run out of room on this page, so I'm going to summarize what is on this page. The first thing we did is we found slopes, and slopes always need two points, whether it's two po perfect points from a graph or two points given to you. Um, if you can walk on it, there is a slope. That's a very big deal. Make sure that you guys remember that. But as long as you can walk on it, there's a slope. And then always make sure that you label points for your formula if you're using your formula. So label points. It always helps. And um, these are my summaries of this. If something else sticks out to you or if you know you're going to have trouble remembering something that was said on this page, then that's what you need to put on your summary. Notes are always for you. Please never, ever, ever carbon copy my notes because they are always for you. Um, I need them to make sense to you. So now go and get out another page. This is still going to be slope. It's always a good idea to keep um, titles. And after I'm done, what I do is I go back and I write um, how many pages. So I would say one of, and since I'm not done yet, I will fill that in in a minute. Then this one would be two of. And if you just make sure that you do that, you'll know that you have all your pieces of paper in case they ever get disorganized or anything. Um, we're not going to fill back in 
an essential question because that hasn't changed. So now we're going to look at the different forms of lines. We have slope intercept form. M is the slope. And B is your Y intercept. So if you're given an equation, because you will have to write equations of lines, and if you're given a graph, The very first thing you need to do is find your slope because you need a slope and a y-intercept. So first, find your slope. And if I use any of these two points, um, I will rise once, and then I will go to the left three times. And if I draw my little stick person with shoes on to the right, he's walking downhill, so it is a negative slope. So negative and rise over run, so one over three. Your second step would be to find your, your y-intercept. And it can always be found wherever your line crosses your y-axis, which is right here. And yes, I know that it says three right here, but remember that is movement. This actual point is zero, two. So your y-intercept is 2. And then the last thing you do is you plug it into the equation. So y equals, and m is my slope, so negative 1 third. And since my y-intercept is 2, it will be plus 2. If your y-intercept was negative, you would put minus, and then that number. And that's our formula. Most equations of lines will be in this form, um, especially whenever you're doing things with me. It'll be a lot easier to see things in this form, but since we are specifically looking at how slopes relate. Um, and we will start that now. So parallel. Lines will always have the same slope. If you had lines y equals 2x plus 3 and y equals 2x minus 1. Right here, these two slopes are the same, so they are parallel lines. Next would be if I had y equals negative x plus 4 and y equals negative x minus 2. And remember that negative x actually means that your slope is negative 1, but they are both negative 1, which means they are parallel. Next is perpendicular, and they have what is called the opposite reciprocal slopes. And that's a fancy way of saying um, that they need the negative and it flipped. So opposite just means you change the sign. So if the slope was originally positive, it will become negative. If the slope was originally negative, it will become positive. So opposite means change sign. And reciprocal just means to flip it. So if it's a whole number, you would put it under 1. If it's a fraction, you will flip it upside down. And examples would be y equals 2x plus 3. But then if you take that 2, and it's positive, so opposite means we change the sign. It will become negative. And then if you flip it, so remember whole numbers are always over 1. So if I fl flip it, it becomes 1 over 2. So my perpendicular line would be negative one-half x, and then I'll make it plus three. The y-intercepts don't matter for this, only the slopes do. And then if we had something like before, y equals negative x plus four. Remember that your slope is negative one. So change the sign, the negative becomes a positive. And one over one, when you flip it, is just one. So the opposite reciprocal slope of negative 1 is positive 1, which means that our perpendicular line would be just a positive x, and then whatever your y-intercept may be. So these have opposite reciprocal slopes. And don't forget to write your summary. I will write my own, but remember you do not have to use mine. I think I noticed that parallel lines have the same slope. Um, also, for parallel, we use a symbol, and it looks like this. It's just two straight up and down lines, so that is the symbol for parallel.
There's also a symbol for perpendicular, and it looks like an upside down T, an upside down capital T. Other things to cover, so first is point slope form. And use slope intercept form whenever you're given a slope and an intercept. It's a whole lot easier to um, grab, well, to find equations of lines. If you're given the slope and the intercept, use slope intercept form. That's why it's called that. Point slope form is easiest to use whenever you're giving a point and a slope. Um, and that is this equation y minus y1 is equal to the slope and then x minus x1. So x1 and y1 um, together are the point or a point and if you're given more than one you just choose one. And then the m is of course the slope. So we're going to use point slope form um, in order to find a line perpendicular to another um, going through a specific point. So if you have a line, um, th don't draw this, this is just an example. If you have a line and then some point and you want to be able to figure out what these, um, the line would be that goes perpendicular to this one and through that line. So in other words, you want to figure out what a line would be that hits perpendicular to the line perfectly and goes through that point. So it's a specific line. Um, so if you want to do that, I'm going to give you some, slip, some steps for that. So perpendicular line through a point. So we need a line perpendicular to y equals 3x plus 1. And we want it to go through the point 3, 3. 3, negative 3, I'm sorry. So the first thing you have to do is figure out the slope of the line given to you. This right here is 3. The second thing you need to do is find the opposite reciprocal slope. Three. We're now going to make it negative. And 3 is really 3 over 1, so whenever we flip it, it is 1 over 3. Your next step is to plug in the opposite reciprocal slope and the point given to point slope form. The y by itself and the x by itself are variables. They are the letter y and the letter x. So this is y. But this y1 is this y right here, so it's going to be negative 3 equals, and my slope is negative 1 third, x minus, and then the x value from that point, which is 3. Now we need to simplify this. Remember, minus a negative means plus, and we need to distribute that negative one-third. At first, it's just negative one-third x, but uh, one-third times three is just the number one, and you guys will always have access to calculators. I will always let you use calculators, so if you freak out with fractions, just put it in your calculator. I do not want fractions to bother you this year. It is a minor issue if you're given calculators. Um, negative times negative is a positive. So negative one third times the, ne the minus three is plus and one. Now I need to move this plus three away from my y and since it's adding you do the opposite which is subtract three. These of course cancel. Just going to bring that part down. And then plus 1 minus 3 leaves you with minus 2. That's the end of the notes, but we still need to write our summary down. If you have any questions at any time while I'm giving notes, um, feel free to write them in this area. Um, let's say that you aren't very good with the algebra part, so you might need, um, need additional help with algebra.